Well, good day, everybody, and welcome to the QPR Analytics Meetup for February 2017. Uh, these are a monthly series that we run. Uh, you can join or have your friends join. Uh, it's a virtual um, meetup group. Uh, folks can come along to any or all of the sessions. Just uh, go to the uh, URL listed here and, uh, and join up. Join up. So we've got a few hundred members, uh, and you'll get invites each month to this uh, to this meetup. But thanks, folks, for coming along today. Uh, I'm going to kick it off. We're going to have two uh, presentations, technical presentations, one on uh, data wrangling and care aggregation, and Peter Shaw is going to run that. Uh, and then uh, an exciting uh, extension that Andrew Berry is going to talk about for natural language generation. And then Helene's going to wrap it up with um, updates to the community site, which is um, quite active. Um, and thanks, everybody, for your participation and activity on the community. Uh, you can also submit questions at any time, and we'll answer those at the end of the session or we'll follow up uh, on email. So just as a few introductory remarks about uh, Spotfire and our investments, uh, we have got a pretty big investment in creating smart visual analytics that are beautiful, immersive, like smart, collaborative, configurable, and allow you to create uh, dashboards point and click, but under the hood it's HTML5, CSS, uh, styling, Themes, colors, configurations are available in a convenient interface to build uh, build these beautiful uh, dashboards. Uh, another area of significant investment is inline data wrangling, uh, immersive, inline, iterative, flexible, um, smart, um, that sort of thing, uh, uh, graphical, and, and also traceable. And uh, you can see uh, we'll get into some of that uh, in the in the example that Peter's going to share today. Um, and uh, and thirdly, data science at your fingertips. So the, the way the stack works, um, we have an embedded R engine inside our client uh, and our server that allows you to um, put in code and run through our engine. No requirement for any other uh, open source uh, downloads or anything like that. Uh, it's just right built into the product. Peter will show you some of that today. Uh, Spotify makes it easy for data scientists to share their work. Uh, one click publish, save as uh, to the library, get the URL, send it out on email, put it in another application, and people can view your work directly through a web client. Um, we support many engines on the server, so if you have uh, legacy SAS code or you have a MATLAB installation, we can uh, generate that in addition to our code through our engine. Or if you've got open source R or floating around, we can uh, connect to that as well. And then the library manages components for reuse and sharing. Um, so things like uh, connections to the data sources and any R code or SAS or MATLAB code, data functions, uh, themes, colors, um, you know, any artifact that you use in creating your analysis can be saved, uh, stored, and, and shared. And then the community acts like a big library for uh, stuff that we put out. You can, you know, a couple of clicks import it into your library or use it uh, directly from the community site. So with this, uh, this framework, we've been busy building uh, lots of data functions and templates that are available on the community site, also a partner exchange site that has uh, uh, some of these, these items uh, for various machine learning, regression, modeling, simulation, optimization type application that allow you to address significant business problems like uh, cross-sell, um, equipment management, predictive maintenance, uh, real-time inventory or pricing fraud detection, uh, supply chain applications, and so on. This is really where you get to the power of the spot fire. And then the streaming analytics, we have an investment there. So as you get your insight, either visual or, or predictive or rural in spot fire, uh, that can be published out to our streaming applications, like uh, Streambase for doing real-time math and uh, inter intervention in the moment uh, of, uh, of streaming data. Uh, and then uh, finally, extensions and APIs. Um, you know, our investments in, uh, in our architecture and our APIs, the, the types of things that you uh, can use to embed uh, and extend our product. Um, you know, top left-hand corner here, um, this text area you, many of you know and love for picking in buttons to do navigation and uh, out-of-the-box bookmarks, but being able to configure them um, and, and point to different graphs, use a graphical table and a, a KPI chart, if you introspect those. And uh, Python code and control those from outside of the uh, spot fire. 
Uh, this is a new smart uh, panel that we have uh, in, in Spotfire for a custom panel for rendering um, both in the web and, and uh, on, on premise on the fixed line. Um, there is some integration of uh, Spotfire running right inside of a, a PowerPoint um, or through a web mashup uh, with other website applications or technologies. Uh, and then extending the graphics palette you see along the bottom row here. And we're the only software that can do these sorts of white cards and, and some of these other extensions. Uh, you know, quite popular, the, the JavaScript visualization extension framework uh, for extending the graphics palette. And what I mean extending, you bring the graphics in um, and you, know, you can configure them to respond to marking and filtering, trellis, you know, trellising, things like, uh, uh, like that, like a usual spot fire uh, experience. Now today, we, Andrew's going to talk a little bit about natural language generation, so that you can generate a narrative as you click around on a spot by a graph uh, through an integration we have with uh, Wordsmith, the uh, NLG product created um, by a company, Automated Insights, that's a, a, a strong partner of ours. Uh, so that's the background and where today's talks uh, fit in. Uh, and without sort of further ado, I'm going to jump right into the data wrangling area. I'm going to kick this off and then and then hand it off to Peter. Um, and you know, the TIPCO R engine, the TEAR engine, is, an, is an, another way to do data wrangling. And we've, uh, we're going to walk you through some approaches for using that um, in combination with the rest of our data wrangling methods. Uh, so when you bring data into Spotify, the, the, the engine uh, firstly figures out if it's a number, a category, a time, a location, a string. Uh, and then based on that, it will give you a profile of the data and allow you to quickly address things like um, uh, you can understand here's a, a categorical variable, how many categories, what's the most common. Um, if, if it's come in as a, a, a data type that you don't like, you can control that directly uh, with a single click. Um, with a categorical variable, you can control the sort order, for example. Um, you can do missing data handling. Um, this is all from the, from the interface of reading in the data. Uh, you can split columns. Uh, if there's a natural break, the, the software will suggest to you, you know, how to split a column to enrich the data. Um, you know, if there's kind of spelling errors or whatever, you can, you're prompted to group, um, group those into a single value. You know, it doesn't destroy the underlying data, but it gives you a, a column or, uh, that combines those uh, you can use in your analysis. And all of these inline um, actions are, are, are logged. And the, the, the software creates a source, what we call a source view, which has complete data lineage from uh, where you read in the data and everything you did to it. Uh, you can see here, you know, adding, when I added this column, here's the detail on what actually happened. So every time you do something, one of these is created, the detail that, of, of what you've done is, is tracked, and so you have the full, uh, full data lineage. Now today, uh, Peter's going to talk about getting down in the, under the hood of this a little bit. So, you know, we have this point and click data wrangling that I just showed. We also have an expression editor. When, so when you click and go create an expression, you, you have this custom expression area. Uh, we've got several hundred functions that you can use to shape the data, you know, enrich the data, uh, cal do calculations. Uh, and what we've added to that um, expression um, area is the ability to use pair or R expression right inside of that, um, inside of that uh, data wrangling interface. So there's two types of those. There's the column expressions, which creates a column of data, and we've covered that one in previous um, meetups. Uh, and today we've, uh, we're picking in, there's a new, uh, you know, I think it's 7.7, .7, we released the ability to do aggregation expressions with R and TER. Now the beauty of an aggregation exp expression is that you can aggregate data and then it, you can put it on the axis of a graph, or uh, you can use the aggregation uh, in, in many ways that is just immediately responsive uh, in the spot fire uh, world. And Peter's going to walk us through you know, how that uh, how that aggregation expression based on a piece of R code running through the native Kubeco R engine inside of Spotfire gives you more flexibility and power, uh, you know, in that. So I'm going to hand off here to you, Peter, and, and you can pick it up and, and walk us through this new development of uh, being able to do aggregations with R and TER inside of our uh, data wrangling environment. So uh, I guess right. I have to hand, hand the ball over to you, don't I? So let me see. Uh, uh, here we go. All right. Thank you, Michael. Let me uh, share my screen here. So are we talking about um, 
this new capability we have in Spotfire 7.7, .7, which is the uh, the tear aggregation. And as Michael was uh, pointing out, we've had the uh, the tear ability to create columns um, with irregular expressions. But this um, the difference here is that by doing the aggregation, it can now respond dynamically to uh, to a visualization. Like if you do a filtering or changing your categorical variable, you can um, see it respond dynamically. Here's a very simple test data set. I just have one X variable, and I've got a couple of different categories just to play around with, just to illustrate the ideas. <clears throat> if I go over to the um, next tab, make a histogram of this, you, know, you can see it's kind of a lopsided, probably the log normal uh, distribution, distribution. And I've got a vertical line here, which is set to the um, one of the quantiles of the of the distribution. And I can control this by this probability level. So if I change the probability of my slider, the, the black line moves around. <clears throat> and at the same time, these two cross tables down here um, show the exact same value there. So as I, as I move the probability level, you can see these, these numbers changing. Now what's going on behind the scenes <clears throat> is that I'm running a tier aggregation expression to get these numbers. The tier aggregation expression takes in the entire data set um, and basically finds the quantile. So if I if I take a look at, um, there's, there's actually two different methods of doing this. I'm going to take a look at this method. I'm calling the registered method first uh, because it's um, it's actually my preferred method. So if I look at the the customer expression for this value, what I have is I have um, I'm calling this tear aggregation quantile. This actually is a function that I've registered. It's a um, sort of a custom function I registered. I'll, I'll show you how that works. But basically what I'm doing is I'm bringing in my data X column and the, the user probability, right? So this uh, aggregation expression uses two inputs, uh, the column here, data.x, and the um, document property, user probability. And the um, underlying code here for the tier X quantile, as I mentioned before, that's a that's the uh, expression that I've actually registered here. So to get there, you basically use the same exact method as you, as you um, use for for data functions. You go to this data functions properties, go over to the um, expressions functions uh, tab right here. Here's my function I register. And to, to register a new one, you just click on new. It's very easy to do that. And the edit thing here is, here's what I'm actually calling my R code, my, my typical R code. I'm calling this quantile function, just a built-in function. Input one, input two. Um, it's a pretty simple thing, but because I've got this registered, I can call it multiple times. Well, there's nothing really dramatic here, but the <clears throat> the uh, the key is that if I change my my grouping variable from none to one of these other um, variables I have, like color, for example, what happens is the visualization splits into three columns, <clears throat> and the two cross tables here split as well. So. Um, and as before, as I, as I move this um, this probability around, each of these each of these graphics panels has a its own unique um, vertical line here showing the quantile at that at that grouping. So it's basically doing an on-the-fly grouping um, for the, for these um, for these three three groups. Now the key for me as a, as a person who writes R code is that if you can go back and look at my um, underlying R code. Right, uh, here's the expression of functions, just the editor. Nowhere in here is any mention about about the group. I don't have to worry about the, any kind of a loop or anything like that. I don't have to set up a, an LPI or a for, any kind of looping. I just simply say, look, you know, whatever comes in here is input one, input two. That's already been filtered down to the data strictly within each of these little groups there. So I, I, I it's all taken care of for me. I just have to focus on writing a, a, a tear function to um, give me whatever I went to for that group of data. So um, it's very it's very convenient to use. And if I change this to the other one, which is my other kind of dummy thing, the, the letter, it just changes back and forth. And I get the, um, the the same kind of responsiveness of, you know, here's my here's my um, quantile showing shown at those at those different groups here. Now there is another <clears throat> way of doing this, a more direct way, which I'm calling the embedded method, which I've got in this upper um, cross table right here. If I take a look at the the, um, the method here, 
basically, I'm just calling it on the fly. <clears throat> I'm actually pasting in the code here. Um, here's my R code in the kind of a pink there. It, it, again, it's a very simple um, piece of code. I can just paste it right in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I've got the, the code there, the inputs, and I've got the, you know, the um, way it appears there. And what I'm calling here is this chair aggregation are real. So these are some of the built-in, we have some out-of-the-box functionality built into um, the Spotfire. So if I go to my, um, here's my expression editor. If I go to my um, category of statistical functions and just kind of scroll through here, when I get to the tear section, um, this tear binary, tear boolean, these are all the standard um, expressions for the, to produce a column of data. And then carrying on down here, there's the tear aggregation series, the tear aggregation. What these are is, um, I'm actually using tear ag aggregation real here. So basically it, it, it inputs, so this function here, tear aggregation real, inputs some arbitrary code. You just type in on the fly as many inputs as you want to, and then it'll produce a single real valued um, result. And, you know, likewise, for integer, binary, boolean, and so forth, it'll produce the single result of that data type. Now, in this, in the same exact list, is my um, here's my function that I registered myself. I, I've given the short name tier ag uh, quantile, but that's that's the one I've actually registered. So it's as easy as that, right? So I just register the function in my in my um, dialog for you know going to editor data function properties to my expression functions, and I can make a new one if I want to, give it a name, a description, ret return value type is whatever it is, and it's gonna be, um, so I'm gonna choose the aggregation function here, it'll return a, sing a single value there. So basically here's my choice between my column function or my aggregation function, and it's as simple as that once I register that, it'll appear in the, in the list of, of functions there. Now, I'll be applying this method, again, this is kind of a toy, toy example, um, applying this method to the idea of net present value. So um, let me jump over to the other example I have. So quite often in, in financial situations, you have a, a case where you're making an initial, initial investment in a project and you the project will then return some uh, proceeds over some number of years. And the way this is often, shown graphically is that the years are spread out on the bottom x-axis and the amount of money changing hands is shown on the y-axis. And from the point of view of the lender, the initial outlay is the, um, the big, uh, one big negative number. And then as the proceeds trickle in over the years, you get these smaller positive numbers coming in. So this is like, you know, imagine a mortgage from the point of view of a bank, the, more, the bank puts out a big lump sum of money to get the mortgage. If these would be the mortgage payments and the exact same thing for any financial project. You, you put some investment in it first and you get the returns over many years. And the question would be, you know, is it better to have bigger returns over a shorter time span or do you believe in a longer time span over, or over a um, longer period of time? So the net present value is basically the calculation to analyze this. So on this next tab here, I've got, um, the same um, kind of a cash flows here, but I've got this discount rate slider. And these are set up, so these are actually the, um, the, the present value of the cash flow. So it's actually the summed um, discounted cash flow. I should probably change this. This is a discounted cash, cash flow. Um, sorry about that. Um, so the deal is as I, as I change the, um, interest rate here, these actually go down. So these, these little bars are, are discounted by the, the interest rate compounded appropriately for the number of years. So it, it goes down at a steady rate there. And to get the, the net of these, bar, these uh, plots on the right-hand side, the net present value is simply the sum of each of these things. So it's the sum of the big negative one plus the sum of all the positive ones. And um, both this one and the one below, which is the internal rate of return, these are actually being done through the um, through these tear aggregation functions. So I've got two tear aggregation functions, one for the net present value and one for the internal rate of return. <laughs> Let me just show you quickly the um, uh, these two. So I've got the 
here's my two registered um, data functions. So that present value, just to look at this, um, well, first of all, it loads as R, library fincal, which does a lot of stuff. And once you've loaded that, then what you've got to do is just call this MPV function and you are, you are done, right? So the, the MPV function um, needs two inputs, input one, the, the, um, the interest rate and the, um, the cash flow uh, variable there. So it's really as simple as that. You, you basically, if you uh, have FinCal loaded, you just use this built-in function and, and there you go. And likewise, for the internal rate of return, um, it's even simpler because it just needs one input, the, um, the cash flow, which is input one. It doesn't even need the, um, the, uh, uh, the discount rate. So the thing about the internal rate of return, as I move this discount rate around, that doesn't change. Um, only the net present value is the one that changes. And, um, <clears throat> you know, so this is actually easier than, you know, going out and coding up all these um, discounted cash flows and so forth. The incidental rate of return, by the way, is the rate at which each of these goes to zero. So if I look at the red one, if I, if I kind of fool around with this and make this, adjust this to make the red one go to zero, that's basically um, the effective internal rate of return. So that's, the, that's what that means is that at 1.75, um, the big negative out, outlay just exactly balances the income from these um, cash flows there. So it's the implied, implied rate of return given the existing cash flow. Now, just to show you how easy this is, this is actually created by my colleague Catalina Herrera, and she just simply went to a Google search, net present value using R, um, and she it comes up with this package FinCal on CRAN. If you look at FinCal, <clears throat> um, for example, net present value is a very simple call, and it's, it's like as simple as that. You just basically load the package, turn this into a piece of R code, and begin using it immediately. So the, the thing about these new aggregation functions is that, you know, they really do extend what you can do using TIPCOS R, and especially, you know, you can go out and get these open source packages and begin to use any of these methods um, that are available to for your calculations. Um, good, so that's um, all I've got. and. Let me pass it over to the um, next presenter. Uh, turn it over to Andrew Barish, who'll be talking about the um, natural language generation. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to talk about Spotfire and natural language generation today. Oh, I've, I've actually gone to the wrong slide deck. Apologies. Just apologize for one second. Just hold one second, please. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure what happened there. Anyway, so I'm going to talk about Spotfire and natural language generation today. What's the power of natural language generation? I'm going to highlight Wordsmith and its features, and how we generate, a, how we construct a, spot, a Wordsmith template, and how we then connect that up to Spotfire and produce the uh, natural language from Spotfire itself. So, what is natural language generation, and what does it do for us? So, it falls under the machine learning area of natural language processing. It generates human-like speech from computer representation. Uh, or a set of rules. Uh, we can take use natural language generation and take structured data and make stories with the tone and variability of a human being, but completely written by software. We cut the reliance on people to incorrectly, perhaps, interpret data, and we quicken the pace of reporting. We can generate hundreds of thousands of distinct, unique narratives every day. We can also standardize the diction and style of our reports and choose the business questions or insights to highlight in that narrative. So Wordsmith 
is a product that uh, provides an open API for language, natural language generation, and it's powered by automation in, Automated Insights, which is a, it's a company, so it's a partner company uh, with Tibco Spotfire. It has many unique features, which include an easy-to-use rule-based template for natural language generation, and rules are configured in the form of complex nested branches for each control flow of the narrative, and they are formed using building blocks. Within um, Wordsmith, it can handle grammar rules internally, so an versus a, and it also provides formatting options for narrative based on the type of the actual variable. So if it's numerical, you can uh, change the way that number is described, for example. Um, it has a web-based API for minimal latency as well. And we can use that API to um, generate the, the uh, the, the, the narrative within Spotfire. So what does a Wordsmith template look like? Well, let me just actually go straight into Wordsmith right now. Um, this shows me editing a, uh, a Wordsmith template, and I can actually just type in some text. And you'll notice that it's just come out as black. That means it's got no kind of um, interactivity or variability or any variables um, or, or synonyms or branches within the, uh, within the data. It's just as simple as actually just starting to type in what I want to uh, uh, say in my natural language. But um, I want to highlight here a pre-built template uh, that we've worked on. So if I click on a paragraph, you can see that paragraph kind of um, collapse out or, or expand out into all the different rules and, um, and, and synonyms and data and the way it's constructed here. So now I've clicked on that top branch, I can see that there's a number of rules. So for example, uh, if I'm looking at all states in the US, the 50 states, then I'm going to actually generate some narrative that works over the whole country. If I've only got one state, then I'm going to work over um, produce uh, just some narrative that's based on that state that I'm looking at, uh, and if it's got if it's got a profit, pro profit value change greater than zero, um, and if the profit change value is less than zero, then I'm going to this rule here. So you can see how it's quite easy to quickly build up a rule structure um, which is based on the actual data, and it will generate whole different chunks of narrative um, based on that data. Uh, you'll you'll notice that we that branches come in blue, so I've just actually expanded a branch so you can see how that works. But then we can also have um, synonyms. So uh, what this is going to do is uh, randomly select one of the following uh, paragraphs. So that nicely gives us some, uh, some natural variability in the data. So because we've got one, two, three, four options here, it, the, the generated narrative is always going to be uh, uh, mixed up with one of these sentences in here, um, and that's going to be randomly generated, so it doesn't always look the same, even if the, the data is basically the same. Uh, okay, so now um, I'd like to show you how data comes into the, um, the, the template. So if I click on this here, that's a, a case where we've got some, some data variables, and we have this state top profit change value. So that's one set of, uh, that's one variable that's present in our data, and that will get substituted into the, uh, the, the template when the natural language is generated. And this is how we change the formatting of that. So um, uh, there's, there's, that, that basically shows you how the, uh, the the, the template is generated, and it's possible to be as simple as you like or as complicated as you like. This is a fairly complex example, but it's designed to show you all the different um, features that uh, that, Wordsmith, that Wordsmith has. So again, here you can see each of these um, paragraphs has a branch with their rules, and I can click into one of these and explore how this is written, um, and you can see that branch is again, and it's got data, which in this case is going to be a categorical, um, so some text, and this one here is a uh, is, is a variable. 
a numerical variable. So once we have created this template in, um, in Wordsmith, I can switch over to, um, to, to Spotfire and show that uh, we have some data in Spotfire about profit change um, based on all the, um, the states in the USA. So at the moment, uh, I've not selected any states. So if you remember when I generated uh, the, the template in Wordsmith, uh, it's going to follow that first branch and generate a, a narrative that applies to the whole of, of the country. So if I click on this button, what it's going to do is assemble the data and send it to the Wordsmith API and generate that narrative. So uh, in, in this case, um, you can see it's it selected the bits of the template that I wanted it to based on the rules, and it's talking about um, the, the whole country. So New York, um, actually, it's generated the whole, it's generated for a selection of states. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. So now I'm looking at the whole of the United States. So now it's going to show me which, um, which, which state uh, is 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 generates the largest for a quarter profit growth, and um, you'll also notice that if I click this button several times, it will actually generate a different narrative. So even though the data hasn't changed, the narrative is completely different. And Wordsmith is class leading in terms of its ability to um, generate that naturally variable uh, language, so that it doesn't look the same and is interesting to read every time. So again, if I now select a couple of states, um, it's going to compare those states to each other and um, generate a, a narrative that tell, that highlights um, which which state is number one, and uh, talk about that as in 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 terms of the whole region as well. And again, as I click this again, it's going to generate a completely different narrative. So. Um, Hopefully, it's not boring for uh, um, somebody to read because it's got all the nice uh, variability based in that text. Okay, so if I now go back to my slide deck, uh, I'd like to talk a bit about how that works and how and how that actually goes on behind the scenes. So again, we've got a couple of more examples here. So based on marking the data, we then have an Iron Python script which uses the Spotfire API to um, take the data from Spotfire and uh, bundle it up as some JSON data, which kind of looks like this. So this is a sample JSON uh, data file, which then gets sent to the Wordsmith um, API over here. And we get the res results and responses from that. And, and we, it returns the narrative to, to Spotfire, which we can then uh, display. So if you notice, there was a, a, a variable that I referred to um, in, um, in, in, the, in the Wordsmith template. Uh, so one of those might be state top profit change. And so that means that in this case, um, Nevada is the state with the, top, with the highest profit change over the previous quarter. So that's how the variable that's here gets translated into the Wordsmith template. And again, that's an example of how the, the, the Spotfire API can very easily and powerfully be used to interact with an external system, pull that system, and return the data from it. I'd just like to call out a couple of links here. We will publish these at the end of the, the, the session. Um, we have a community page if you want to know more and to get the reference that I've shown you here. Um, and there's also the link to uh, automated Insights and their partner page with Tivco as well. And a couple of press releases as well, which we will also publicize after the meeting. Okay, now I'd like to um, transfer to Helene. Thank you, Anne.
Okay, so um, as always, uh, we always try to give an update on the TIPCO community in our uh, TIPCO analytics meetup, and uh, I'll do that again today. And just a reminder for those of you that are new to the TIPCO community or new to this meetup, um, the, the website to go to is community.tipco.com, also very easy to find if you uh, simply search for TIPCO and community in Google. Um, there are some main um, sort of parts of the TIPCO community which I just wanted to remind everyone of. Um, those are answers, wiki, exchange and ideas, and I'll quickly um, summarize what the functionality is of each of those sections. Answers is where you can ask questions and get answers. Uh, so this is very useful to search. There are about 10,000 questions answered already for Spotfire. So there's likely um, uh, going to be a question for you in there that will help you um, uh, answer your, the questions that you have. Uh, you can contribute answers as well, which would be great. Um, the next section is the wiki. Um, I'll go into a bit more detail on that today. Um, the wiki is where we share all our content um, with you know, a number of experts and, and our um, customers like you, our users and partners as well. Um, and the main goal of that wiki content is to make you uh, more successful with our software. So for Spotfire, there's a lot of how-to information that should help you um, speed up the development of your analytic applications. Um, and then there's the exchange. It's mentioned a few times um, in this meetup already. Um, it is where we share more complete uh, components with you, things that you can use um, directly with your data, either data functions or um, Spotfire templates or DXPs or full accelerators. So they're all um, uh, tested um, to give you a quick start on, uh, on building an application that is either industry specific or uses some of our advanced analytics applications. And then uh, last but not least, the ideas portal. This is where you can submit ideas and recommendations to further improve Spotfire. Um, it is your direct line with our product management team. Um, you can either submit your own idea or vote on existing ideas, and you'll get direct responses from our product management team on um, sort of the feasibility of your uh, idea. And also, you know, if your idea gets implemented with a new version, you'll be updated as well. So the next thing I just wanted to remind you of is that on the wiki portion of the uh, TIPCO community, we, we share a lot of information that is, um, that is used in, in um, webinars like this one. Um, so all of the recordings from the TIPCO Analytics Meetup series are available on the TIPCO community. They'll be shared with you through the Spotfire online user group as well. But um, if you want to search any previous topics that we have um, presented and demoed, um, they're available to you as well. And what we usually do is that we um, that we change the uh, the WebEx recording uh, to a YouTube video as well, just for the specific demo, so that it's easy to search and uh, and use as a reference later on. The other um, opportunity for learning I wanted to point you to is the Dr. Spotfire Office Hours webinars. These are um, really, really helpful if you have a specific analytic challenge that you'd like to solve and would like to get some help with that. You can submit your question uh, through the normal channels of the uh, community, so through answers. There are also some hashtags and there are other ways that you can communicate with Dr. Spotfire. Um, and then uh, you know, some of these questions will be selected and will be addressed live in a webinar and with a number of our data science and Spotfire solution consultants on the WebEx to, uh, to solve your issues directly and to show how to, uh, how to do that. So usually we get to five or ten you know, different uh, topics in one webinar and the feedback from the people that attend uh, that attend is really, really positive. And we do this about twice a month, so, um, so feel free to submit your questions and we look forward to seeing you join those sessions. So then um, we've got the wiki. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this today. Um, we have organized the wiki for Spotfire in uh, three main sections, core capabilities, um, beyond the core and industry solutions. In the core capabilities, you'll find lots of how-to information if you're just starting with Spotfire, but also if you want to learn more about the core capabilities of Spotfire, such as maps, but also data access and data wrangling, which we talked about uh, today. You saw some demos today. Then uh, in Beyond the Core, um, uh, we have the more advanced topics uh, and applications of Spotfire, like machine learning and big data, IoT, um, and I'll be showing some more information on extending Spotfire today. Um, and then industry solutions. So increasingly, we're also um, summarizing and, uh, and producing our content um, more specific to industry. So we have a lot of great information on energy and manufacturing, customer analytics, financial services um, available for you as well. 
So for today, um, I'd like to share with you um, the relevant uh, information that is available on extending Spotfire. And the reason why we chose this topic for today is because we get a lot of questions on this, um, but um, uh, we just want to make sure that people are actually aware um, of the information that we have uh, increasingly been sharing on the community um, for you. And I'm actually going to do that by going to the community itself. So. Um, the best way to always uh, find something on the community is, is by searching. So, um, you know, in this case, if I want to look for extending Spotfire, I just type in extending Spotfire and I will get um, a search selection that um, gives me anything uh, on, you know, the relevant sections on the community. So in this case, there's 22 questions and answers and five wiki pages about the topic. In this case, um, uh, I know that this is the page that I'm actually looking for, which is the, the main topic page for extending TIPCO Spotfire. Um, now, the other way to find this is just to go to the main wiki page. And this is another easy way I find to navigate the community. Uh, this is the main wiki page for um, the overall TIPCO community. So as you can see, this will have a main page for every single software product that TIPCO has. Um, so in this case, we want to look at TIPCO Spotfire. And voila, this is the page that I just showed you with the main topics um, that we have sort of um, uh, in which way we have organized the content for you. So again, we can just click on extending Spotfire and that brings me to the same page I got through um, via searching. So sometimes it looks like there's a lot of information that you may not be able to find, but if you use search or that main wiki page, you should really uh, find your way. So, um, Extending TIPCO Spotfire, um, you know, this is really about the Spotfire APIs. Um, API stands for Application Program Interface. And in essence, this is um, a set of routines or, or tools or protocols for building custom Spotfire applications. So an API uh, specifies how the Spotfire components should interact. And it's for developers or data scientists or more advanced analysts who have a need to, to really, you know, modify a script to do uh, pretty much anything they want to do with the script that and other users would otherwise do through the graphical user interface. And, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunity to, to customize your um, applications. Um, the way that we have grouped this information is really based on the feedback that we're getting from uh, all of you through support as well as through our data science team. There's a lot of collaboration in creating this content and expanding this content uh, between our um, support team, our product management team, uh, and, uh, and our data science team. And what we've done is um, the first group of uh, type of um, uh, APIs are the ones that come with the Spotfire platform. So all of this is available uh, for you without, you know, installing anything else. And I'll go through this um, in a bit more detail. And then the um, the other group is um, are the extensions um, and customizations where you may or where you actually have to install or purchase something additional. So the JavaScript visualization framework, for, for example, allows you to use a JavaScript visualization libraries such as C3. This is all free and all the available information is, um, is on the community when you, when you click on the link for the section. There is an explanation on how to use NIME and Spotfire for which you only need a, a connector. Um, there's information on the alerting extension and then the uh, natural language generation extension uh, with wordsmiths with um, what, what Andrew just demoed. Um, and actually we've demoed NIME and alerting in previous uh, TIPCO Analytics meetups as well. And then um, the final section is about some further customization options such as co-branding and then we end with some uh, useful links to any help that you may need from partners or from um, or professional services to help with uh, implementing any of these uh, um, customizations. But hopefully with the help that is provided on the community, you don't need um, a lot of help and you get a good, uh, good start. So um, if you scroll down on any of these um, content pages, in this case on uh, the extensions, you'll see a brief description of the different types of APIs available. So extending Spotfire with C++, um, automation with Iron Python, I'll, I'll, I'll share this in a bit more detail. Um, uh, web integration with JavaScript, web services, uh, this is for example if you want to uh, create scheduled updates. Extending Spotfire server with Java, this is um, useful if, you, um, if your applications need specific authentication. Uh, for example, if you embed Spotfire web player in a portal, um, so if you're sharing data with external partners, or customers, and if you need to have very secure and specific access, or if there's a single sign-on requirement for web player, for example. 
Um, so all of these um, sections have tutorials and examples which really help you explain what the specific API can do for you. Um, and um, just so that we don't run out of time, I do want to share uh, the detail um, on the Iron Python scripting page that is available. So again, the first part is all the tutorial, so how to do this with my existing platform. And then there is a, a, a lengthy section on examples, and especially on Iron Python, this has really expanded in the last um, months. Um, these are all examples based on um, you know uh, frequent questions that we can to get from you, and so hopefully a lot of these are useful for you to uh, to work on. A couple of um, of those are um, directly related to the most recent releases of the product. Um, in this case, for example, um, this uh, this sort of how-to example um, shares um, or tells you how to set and fix the layout of uh, visualizations on a dashboard page, and every time you'll have the exact code um, that allows you to do this. Um, you often have some screenshots as well, and um, in the end, you also have a DXP that you can download. So it's it's really intended um, to let you you know experience uh, uh, hands on you know how this is being done, and then you can uh, you can try it for yourself with your own data. Um, another example here is um, how to create and configure a KPI chart. So the way that this is set up, and this is really you know the KPI chart is a relatively new visualization that sometimes you you may not um, find all of the capabilities in the normal function functionality and you want to customize it a bit more. Um, this uh, information allows you to, to learn exactly the different things that are possible. So for every single customization, there's a, a small example of the code and uh, also again at the end of the page, a DXP that shows you exactly how to do each of these different steps. So that's what I wanted to share on um, the community. So I hope you enjoy that page and we'll share the links with you so you can browse um, at your leisure um, as a follow-up. I also wanted to take the opportunity to quickly um, advertise the Tikkun uh, Now uh, conferences. Uh, this year we'll do them in three different cities, in Singapore, in Berlin and San Diego. So we really hope to see you there. You can find the details on the agenda uh, at now.tipco.com. Um, and uh, we are also going to be well represented at the upcoming Gartner Summit. So there's one in uh, Texas on March 6th through 9th, and then the next one is in London, March 20th to 22nd. So we have booths there and presentations. Um, we look forward to meeting you uh, at the various events. And um, with that, I think uh, we actually are going to finish this uh, meetup with maybe some questions, if we have any questions that come in. Andrew, I think you've been uh, monitoring the Q&A section to see or any any chats that have come in directly with any questions. Yes, so um, so thank you, Helene. I, I have a couple of questions. Uh, one is, will we be sending the links to the references um, that we showed during the, our various presentations, so particularly around the, the natural language that I showed, the links that you also showed? So I can answer that. Um, yes, we're going to be sharing the um, a PDF version of the uh, presentation, uh, and we'll put the relevant links uh, additionally into the Spotfire Meetup as well. Um, so, and I think as soon as you get the link to the Tico community, you actually can find most of what we have demoed today anyway. So, uh, but feel free to respond to the Spotfire online meetup group as well. Um, Alexis and I are mostly uh, monitoring those to, uh, to answer any questions you may have. Okay, thank you, I think, Elaine. Um, I also yes. had a question. If, if I want to embed a Spotfire visualization in a, in a website, um, do I need the JavaScript visualization framework? <laughs> Good questions. Um, uh, no, you don't, because uh, if you want to embed a Spotfire visualization, that can be done with the native uh, JavaScript API, so that's the, the one that comes with the Spotfire platform. The, that's the first group that I showed on the uh, extending Spotfire page, um, and it will explain in detail um, how to do that. That's actually one of the examples that is detailed. Um, the JavaScript visualization framework um, you only need if you want to um, create your own uh, visualizations using the JavaScript libraries such as D3. And that is a custom extension that you'll need to download um, and it's available for free and the instructions are um, on that same page as well. 
hope that helps because it is confusing. Uh, they're both JavaScript, so uh, <laughs> it's a common question that we get. Thank you, um, Helene. I've seen that question. Um, so yes, uh, we also have a question, a couple of questions around the natural language generation. Um, do do we need an additional license in order to be able to use WordSmith? Um, I'll take that. The answer is, is yes. Um, we we suggest contacting contacting um, WordSmith directly via their website, which is automatedinsights.com. That's all one word. Again, we will publish publish size the link uh, for that at, afterwards after the meeting. So it's an additional product, but. Um, but Automated Insights and TIBCO are partner companies, and we work very closely together. So um, you're working with, with companies that have a um, uh, track record together. Uh, another question is, does WordSmith support other languages? Yes, you can actually just directly type in whatever language you want. I, I believe it supports all Western European languages um, by default. Of course, some of the grammar rules that apply that I showed, like a and an for um, plural and singular, uh, won't work in, in other languages. But there's nothing stopping creating that narrative in any other language than English. I have a question for, um, for, for Peter for the TER aggregations. Can a TER aggregation return one, more than one value? Uh, right, so uh, the answer is no, and the reason is because it's basically designed to be used in uh, visualization in a very lightweight, rapid fashion. So just like the other um, uh, Spotify ag aggregation come out of the box, um, it returns just one guy, and that makes it work very fast, and you can use it very easily in a, in a visualization. Good question. Okay, thank you very much, Peter, and I have another one for you. Um, what ter aggregation functions are provided out of the box? That's a good question too. So um, the aggregation uh, functions out of the box are those wrappers I kind of pointed to, the ones that basically return, you know, a single real number or integer or whatever. Um, but the coding is still left up to up to you. So the um, the the purpose is r rather than providing a, a a big list of all the exhaustive things because you can do obviously you can do a huge amount with the open source you know uh, scripting with with the R language. Uh, those are the the wrappers um, provided out of the box, and then you can um, obviously extend those in any ways you want. So basically, the answer is you have about I don't know about five or six of those uh, basic functions. Okay, cool. Um, and do we do we do we publish those anywhere on the uh, on the uh, on the on the wiki? Do we have some examples of aggregation functions on the wiki? Uh, the example I'll show today will be appearing on the wiki shortly. Shortly. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay, um, Helene, Michael, those are the only questions I had. Yeah, I just had a couple Great. of add-ons there uh, for um, on the natural language generation, the WordSmith integration. You can contact us as well as WordSmith. Um, you know, either company can uh, provide the additional uh, components required for the for the integration. And I did want to also make a comment that you know we jumped across the press release, but the uh, the, the customer we just did the press release with is um, really interesting. Constellation Brands. They sell uh, alcoholic beverages primarily through um, supermarkets and other outlets. And they have brand managers for products like their Corona brand or their uh, Gallo Wines brand. Uh, and then they have regional managers. And so when you click around on that map, um, the regional managers are getting a, a summary that is in the language of Constellation Brands, and they're getting a summary that um, reflects the various KPIs that they're measuring their business on, You know, whether that's uh, increasing sales, what's the leading month, what are the expectations. Whereas the brand manager, you know, may have something a little more uh, strategic involved um, in KPIs that are, reflect growing the business in the category, um, uh, for example, and all that uh, standard language is, can be reflected in the in the templates. Um, so yeah, we 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 we're here to help you on on either of these uh, items, and uh, I'll hand it back to uh, Helene to wrap it up. Sure. 
I actually, what I forgot to mention um, when I um, uh, mentioned the Gardner Summit is that um, Michael has actually been publishing a blog to um, to talk about the big jump that Spotfire made in the Gardner BI and Analytics MQ. So I would invite everyone to uh, to sort of follow that blog for the next four weeks. Um, there'll be a new section every Monday. So the link is on this slide as well. We'll share these uh, slides with you afterwards. So finally, um, I just wanted to um, announce the next TIPCO Analytics Meetup, which is um, uh, in a little bit less than two months, on April 18th. So you will be uh, getting an automatic invitation if you're part of the Spot Spotfire online user group. So uh, please take a look at that and also invite your friends uh, to that if, uh, if they're interested in these kind of uh, uh, demos and uh, information about how to use Spotfire to the max. So thanks everyone for attending and we look forward to uh, interacting with you on the TIPCO community and on the Spotfire online user group. And one quick wrap up there for me as well. Thanks, Alina. Uh, if folks want to hear more about the Gartner analysis and uh, that sort of thing, um, happy to get into the details of that. The blog will cover it in some, some ways. We've got a number of customers speaking with us at the upcoming Gartner events, uh, State Street, um, MMI Media, uh, Generali, for example. Uh, so, yeah, lots of activity going on in, in the month of March. And uh, if you want to participate in that, um, get in touch with us or come visit us at uh, one of those events. Uh, thanks, Andrew and Peter. Thanks, Helene. I guess we'll wrap it up here. Thank you.